Hello, it's Jenny from the Texo product team. Today we'll be going through the new Texo V2, our all new powerful data automation and AI platform for sales teams. Let me give you a little bit of history about Texo first. We launched our first version in 2020 and we have received massive traction since then. Now, four years later, we decided that we're ready to launch our new version, Texo V2, rebuilt from scratch. What can you do with Texo? With Texo, you can find leads anywhere on the internet and reach out to them across multiple channels like LinkedIn, Twitter, and email. Our platform now allows you to personalize interactions at scale using AI and thus ensuring that you deliver the right pitch at the right time. What else does Texo have in stock? Well, we offer over 180 ready to use automations and workflows making it easier to connect with your prospects and manage your sales pipeline. You can also create unlimited workflows for different use cases. What else is new? Now we have our new desktop app that can act as a proxy. With our new Magic Link feature, you can easily manage your client's social accounts. Texo V2 also seamlessly integrates with tools that you already use like Reply, Lemlist, HubSpot, Piperdrive, Smartlead, and many more. Now, let's not waste any more time and go ahead and explore these features and see how our new platform works, the all new Texo V2. First, I'd like to walk you through the sign up process for Texo V2. When you open the registration page, you will see a prompt to enter your email address, your phone number and your password. We use your phone number to send you an OTP code, which will confirm your Texo V2 registration. In case you receive any issues with receiving the OTP, in some very, very rare cases, we have seen that happening due to carrier restrictions with some of our users. Please don't hesitate to contact our support team and they will be happy to assist you if needed. Next, you will be prompted to enter some additional details about you, such as your company name or the goals that you have um, with using Texo. You will be prompted to download the Chrome extension, which will help you set up your accounts to import the accounts uh, that you will be using in Texo V2, such as your LinkedIn account or um, Twitter, etc. So one thing you need to remember is that it's good to um, finish the process in one go, the sign up process and the setup process of your accounts in one go. That's something that we recommend so that there is no um, issues in the connection because sometimes you might need to restart the connection. So once you have added all of your accounts, you will be ready to start using Texo. Let's take a quick look at some of the main components of Texo V2. First, we have the accounts management. Here's where you can manage all of your various accounts in one place. Then we have the automation store. This is where you can access a wide range of pre-built automation templates. Next, we have the workflow builder. Here you can create complex workflows easily and have them running within minutes. Then we have the data store. This is where all of the data from your automations will be coming through. Here also you can manage that data and export it. Next, we have my favorite, the AI Prompt Builder. This is also new in V2. Here you can use AI to generate prompts and automate responses quickly and easily. And last, we have the Preferences. Here you can customize Texo to fit your specific needs. I will start by detailing the accounts or our dashboard section. Here you can see all of the accounts that we have imported during the signup process. If you would like to add a new account, you can do so by clicking the add new button. One thing that you will notice is that we have different workspaces in Texo. So depending on your plan, you can have more than one workspace but everyone has at least one workspace. This allows you to easily manage 
all of the accounts or of all the clients that you're working with. In each workspace, you can add up to five different accounts. And when you hover over the add new button, you will see that you can see how many accounts you have left to add. For example, I have added only one account and now I can add up to four more accounts. When I click on the add new button, I can choose what type of account I would like to add. For example, Twitter. Then I can either click on add account or use our new feature share via magic link. That is actually something fantastic to do if you have, um, if you're working with clients, because you can just share the link with them and then they can share the access with you without having to import it through the Chrome extension. When you have added all of your accounts and you're ready to go, we can see here the name of the person that the account is attached to, the platform type, in this case here it's LinkedIn. We have also the proxy, here you can set up the proxy as well, if you have not already. Then you can see a quick uh, link for uh, the specific account that you have linked. You will also see here um, the indicators, the light indicators for the proxies and the cookies. Ideally, you would want to have these to be lit up in green, but in case it is not green, what you can do is you can click the little sync button here. For example, if your cookies light indicator is in orange or red, um, that means that there is a disconnection in the back end. So what you can do is you can just click on the sync button and then in a couple of minutes, the connection will be restored and then your automations will be running freely again. Next, we have the limits. Here under limits, you can set up a limitation as to how many times a certain automation or process can run in a given time frame. For example, hourly, daily, etc. So um, I would recommend that you keep this simple and uh, not edit it, but you can edit it if that is necessary. You can set these limits for each of the accounts that you have added here. For example, I have just LinkedIn here, but if you have multiple accounts, you can set up limits for each account that you want. Next, we have the variables. Um, what are the variables? The variables are text placeholders that you, for something that you use quite frequently, for example, it could be your name, your company name, uh, your product name, the location of your business, etc. So what it does is it simplifies um, the automation process. So instead of having to add that text multiple times, your variables will just insert that text in your um, process and then your workflows will be much more efficient. So as you can see for each um, account, uh, you have different variables. So you have different variables for LinkedIn. If I add Twitter, for example, I will have different variables for that. And also you can add a new variable for each account that you want. So you can add and save as many variables as you want for each account. And last, we have the uh, account delete button. So when you click on the delete button, you will see that a small red message will appear. So that basically informs you that um, if you delete that account, the automations connected to it will stop running or will give you errors. So we have done that just to ensure that you don't delete it by accident. So this is everything that we need to know about the account sections. The automation store holds a variety of preset automations that you can choose from and you can run quickly and easily. What we have done in Texo V2 is we have separated them into categories. So you can choose from various categories of automations for each platform. They are categorized based on the function that they perform. For example, search and collect, scan, communicate, react, network, and reach, etc. You can also search by platform. For example, LinkedIn, you have separate ones for Sales Navigator and Recruiter as well, Twitter, Reddit, etc. If you're using an automation quite frequently and you know the name of that automation, you can also search by 
um, a keyword. For example, I could look for an event automation for LinkedIn. Or if you actually are running these automations quite frequently, you might want to pin them. So if I go to, for example, LinkedIn, you see I have like so many different automations. And if I want to auto delete comments quite frequently, I could pin this and that automation will come up to the top. That way I don't have to scroll or search for it in the future. Now, one thing that we can do is we can try to run an automation. So what I would choose to do is I would run an event automation. So for example, I would do a LinkedIn event scraper. I click on that automation and then I have three different input choices. So let me explain these quickly to you. So the single input choice is if you, you would basically type in manually your input, the information, and that is good when you want to just run the automation once um, and with one set of data. Now, in the situations where you want to uh, run an automation with multiple um, inputs simultaneously, that is when you want to choose the input through Google Sheets or CSV file, respectively. Like you can just upload your file with the respective input and run the automation. In my case, what I would choose to do is a simple demonstration. So I would just uh, select the single input. So when you open the page for each automation in the top right corner, you will see a small button which says what data you get. Um, that is something that I really like because when you click on it, you can see each and every piece of information that will be pulled um, through this automation. And that will be the kind of uh, data points that you're getting for um, this automation. Um, you will also notice that we have um, several different tabs here. We have input, schedule and output mode. So let me explain each one in detail. Under the input, you can select which account you want to use. For example, I have um, only one account linked here, but if I have more than one LinkedIn account connected, then I would be able to choose which one I want to run the automation from. Then I have to enter the event URL that I want to fetch the details for, and I want to run the automation for. In my case, I would choose this IFX Expo event. And what I would do is I would copy the link to that event. One thing that you want to make sure about is that you have the correct URL and it is pointing exactly at the event page. Then if I want to schedule the automation, for example, if I want to run an automation um, at a certain time every day, uh, at a regular periods, let's say um, at a certain day of the week, like every Tuesday or every 20th of each month or on specific dates, I can set this up here. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I don't want to set any schedule. I just want to have a very simple automation, right? In the output mode, you have several options. The first one is append. This is your default option. Basically, if you select that, your results will um, appear in the same file. So all of the uh, populated results, each time you run the automation will appear in a single file. If you choose the split option, every time when you run the automation, a new file will be generated. If you choose the overwrite option, um, the results for uh, each time you run the automation will be overwritten. So for example, if you're looking for only the new information, the changed information, that is a good option to choose. That will also delete any previous information that you have um, in the automation. 
And then you have a great option that is the duplicate management. If you choose deduplicate, the automation will delete any repeating information, any rows with repeating information. So once you have set up uh, everything, you can just go ahead and run the automation. And while we are waiting for the automation to perform the action, I can tell you briefly about the color codes. So under the status of the automation, while the automation is running or in the data store, you will be able to see the different color coding for the status. If you see that it is green, that means that it is being completed. If it's blue, that means it's still running. Red light will indicate that it is failed. Orange means that it's paused and black means that it has stopped. Now, while I explain that to you, my automation has already completed. And um, if you stay on this page, you can see the name of the um, automation, the platform. Uh, you can see when it was created, how long it took for it to um, to complete the status, it is completed, and then I can either show the results or rerun the automation. So um, if I choose to show the results, um, that will show me uh, all of the information that I saw in that what kind of data you get over here. So I can see the event URL, the activity, um, the creation date, event time, etc., etc. All the information is here. I can choose to download the information as CSV or open it in a Google Sheet. And that is the same information that I will see in the data store as well. So if we look at the data store, this is the automation that I just run and I can see all of the details here already. So briefly, this is everything you need to know about the automation store. Next, I want to show you the workflow builder. Here you can build a complex workflow of up to 15 steps quickly and easily just within minutes. Let's start with clicking the workflow. We can choose the name of our workflow here. For example, I will choose test number three. And if you want, you can even add small notes about your workflow. For example, what it does. This actually makes it easier when you're collaborating with other team members. For example, if you want to make sure that everybody understands what this workflow is about, for example, extract company data. The workflow builder is extremely easy and intuitive to use. So we have three different sections here. The first is automation, the second is operation, and the third is integration. What that does is basically it tells you what kind of actions you have um, to work with in the, work, in the workflow. For example, in the automation, we can choose a platform. For example, we choose LinkedIn. Uh, we choose what kind of action we want to complete. Um, I can search by keyword. So I have just typed in extract company data. So I can just search by company and see what kind of automations I have for company and I can export companies. I add this to my workflow. Then I can add multiple steps to that in every direction. So just click the plus button. And for example, I want to choose some kind of operation. So you can choose here from uh, router, you can filter delay, or you can choose an outgoing webhook as well. So for the sake of this um, workflow, I think I will choose to filter. When I click on the icon here, I can set up the, I can configure the filter. So if I click on add condition, I can say, for example, I want my variable to be keyword, URL, category, etc. So I will choose a keyword. And the rule for that keyword would be to contain. 
and then I could just type in the value of that keyword. What kind of keyword would I want the company name to contain? So I would choose, for example, trading. So this filter, um, I saved it. So in this filter, basically, um, will filter out all of the companies that contain the name trading, the, the word trading in their name. Next, I could choose either an integration. For example, I could choose um, to create a spreadsheet on Google Sheets. Um, I can choose to add this to my HubSpot database or uh, create uh, records in my HubSpot, or I can choose any other automation after that. I can also choose like another uh, operations, which is like to root it and, you know, if then as well. Um, so there's like multiple, um, multiple options and steps that you can use here. So if I, if I want to delete it, I just need to click on that and hit the delete button. And that's as easy as um, one of my steps is removed. Um, so I then can just run the automation, just like the run the workflow, just like an automation. I have the button here and I have the schedule again and I can see the run history just um, just like the automation, but you have multiple steps here, which makes it way, way more efficient. Um, so that is about creating a workflow. I want to show you what the data store has um, in store. Um, so in the data store, as I mentioned previously, um, it hosts all the data from all of your workflows and automations. Here is where you can manage all of your data um, and um, you can quickly access the workflows and the automations that you have run as well. So let's start with the search bar. You can search um, for any of your automations or workflows by keyword here. Since if you are a power user of Texo V2, you will have so, so many results here that you would definitely need to use search. You can also choose by store. So whether that is an automation or a workflow or API, uh, you can filter by status if it's completed, running or failed. Um, you can filter them by account. Of course, here I have just one account, but if you have more than one account, you will be able to choose here and filter by each account that you're using. And you can filter by platform as well. So you have all of the platforms that you can connect to Texo here. So what you will see is the workflow name when it was created, um, how much, uh, if it is um, uh, active, um, what is the runtime for each workflow or automation respectively, what is its status. As I explained to you earlier, there was like, um, you know, a color sheet with like the status of um, each color, the meaning of each color. You can see what platform that uses, whether it's just one or multiple platforms, whether you have any schedule attached to this workflow or automation. And then you also have the two buttons. One is open and one is see data. So if I click on see data, for example, from the LinkedIn event scraper that I did earlier, I could see um, the results from that automation that I have run. And I can also choose to um, extract the data into um, CSV or Google Sheet. And I also have the open button, which is going to take me straight uh, into the specific automation or workflow so that I can run it again, or I can rerun it, or I can edit it and um, get different results. Also, you have these um, three dots on the right hand side. So here you can uh, clone each of your uh, workflow or automation. You can reset it if something went wrong or you can click on this manage executions button where you can see every time that this automation was run and the history of that. And you also have the delete button for each automation and workflow.
The next feature is my favorite, the AI prompt builder. This is a new feature that we have in TextOV2, and it is a tool that uses artificial intelligence to help you generate prompts and automate responses. So whether you're engaging with your customers on social media or sending emails or responding to inquiries, this AI prompt builder can save you a significant amount of time. It can really be a life changer for salespeople. So let me show you quickly how it works. Um, for example, let's say that I want to send a LinkedIn message. Um, I would choose uh, from any of the options that we have here. Um, so I would choose the LinkedIn AI message. So um, as I said, it is using AI to generate uh, prompts and responses. Um, so there is a few sections here that I'm going to review. So first you have to select your platform. So as I said, I have connected only LinkedIn. So I have LinkedIn and this is a LinkedIn um, builder. So um, I choose the platform. I choose my account. I choose my open AI account and I can um, select the prompt. For example, if I want to um, invite somebody to my event or I want to send them a message um, about a new product or service that I'm launching, I can edit my user prompt. Um, so here is where I can do that. And of course we can use the variables here and that is really life-changing. You can uh, click on insert variables here so as I said, you can use your first name, last name, your company name, product, etc. Um, you can use um, the your prospects uh, variables as well. So depending on the kind of um, you know message that you're targeting, you can select that. Um, you can also um, choose the um, the model that you want to use, whether it's uh, 3.5, GPT-4, and you can adjust the temperature and uh, based on, you know, the kind of message you want to convey. And um, you can test the prompt as well. So what happens is your result will uh, appear here in the assistant answer field. So you can just copy paste it and like put it into any of your automations and for example, if you want to use the automation to send a LinkedIn message, that would be really life uh, altering for you. Or if you use it with the sales navigator, that is also an excellent use case. Um, I really cannot wait to see what you will create with this new feature. It is so exciting. It is something new in TechZo that we have been really, really excited to bring up to you and see you generate wins with that tool. And last, I want to review the preferences. Um, so here you can um, set up the platform to work, um, you know, according to your preferences. So you have two sections here. Uh, the first one is the workspace. So here you can adjust the um, settings and the preferences for your workspace. So you can see, uh, number one, you can see the users, you can see how many users you have, um, how many invitations you have sent. At this point, I don't have any sent invitations, how many pending invitations you have, the users you have sent invitations to will appear here. You can, of course, add a new user. You can um, enter their name, their email address, and select the kind of um, user rights that you want to assign to them. You click add, and then it sends them an invitation to your uh, workspace. Next, we can uh, set up our notifications. So you can, for example, set up a Slack or email notification each time on a one of your automations or one of your workflows um, has an execution or even when the execution has failed or when your cookie has expired um, as i explained earlier when you have like a red light that means that you know your cookie has expired and you need to resync it and reconnect the account so you can choose to receive an email or slack notification um, 
for um, for these kind of actions. Next, we have the integrations. Now, this is where you can connect all of the integrations for all of the other tools that you're using. For example, um, Lemlist, HubSpot, Google Sheets, etc. So let me explain to you briefly how that works. For example, if you click on HubSpot, you click on new account and then it will open HubSpot and it will ask you to either create a new HubSpot account or sign in with your uh, existing account. Most likely you will already have an existing account. So once you sign up into the, your account, um, that information will be pulled through to Texo V2 and you will have the integration active and running. Um, as I said, you have multiple integrations here and more coming soon within the proxies here's where you can um, set up your proxies so um, you can click the button to add a new proxy add your details here the proxy name um, ip port username password you can even test it to make sure that it's running correctly and everything is set up properly next you can set up your api here as well you can generate a key and last in the workspace, you can set up your desktop. So if you're using desk, desktop um, app, the, the Texo V2 desktop app, here's where you can configure it. How do we do that? We just click on uh, add new because in this case, I don't have any desktop app configured. So I can select the name of my desktop app. I can click save and then I am good to go. Within the organization preferences, again, I have my account users. I can add or delete workspaces. I can edit the workspace name um, or I can add a new workspace. Um, I can add a time zone as well, which is really handy. And next we have the security tab here. You can set up your two factor authentication. We recommend that you do that um, when you set up your account, but you haven't done it already. We do recommend that you do it um, later on. Next, we have our partners program. So Texo has a referral program whereas you can refer some of your friends colleagues to texo and then you can receive a payout so in this case i have already created um my link but if you don't have it yet you can just you will have a button that says um, create a referral link and once you click that it will create this referral link for you and you also have a little tracker where you can um you can see how many referrals you have, how many people you have invited, the number of impressions you have on your URL as well. Um, so that is a great way to not just spread knowledge and help people um, get to know Texo and uh, you know improve their workflows and productivity, but you can also um, make some money out of this. And last, we have the subscription and billing where you can um, upgrade or downgrade your account. You can manage your subscription and you can also purchase add-ons. So if you want to purchase, for example, um, extra execution time or you want to purchase uh, proxy bandwidth, this is where you can upgrade and you can do that. Um, so I believe this is everything that I have um, to say today about Texo V2 or just at least the basic details. Um, please stay tuned for all of the um, all of the details that uh, we're we're releasing. We're releasing a lot of videos coming soon, um, a lot of new tutorials we're launching. So stay tuned and follow us for um, more information, more hacks and tricks and how to make the most of using uh, Texo V2. 
So thank you so much for staying with me today. And I hope you found this video informational and um, helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us, contact the support team, and we'll be happy to help you. So thank you so much and have a great day.